six warning signs or symptoms that you might have infertility or a hard time getting pregnant. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor. And this channel exists so that we can talk about your fertility, your health, your hormones, and help you understand your body the best. One thing you can do is subscribe to the channel, like the video, that will help spread our message to more people. Now, one of the top questions that I get asked is all about how will I know if I'm gonna have trouble getting pregnant? Can I test my fertility? I wanna be pregnant one day, but not now. And one of the hardest things is that I can test your fertility right now and know if something is wrong right now. None of that though guarantees you'll be able to get pregnant in the future. But one of the biggest places of regret is when somebody has warning signs that something was wrong and they didn't know. This can lead to a long time of trying to get pregnant where maybe you should have accelerated fertility treatment care or just wasting your own time, not making good decisions. So that's what this video is about. Six of the top signs or symptoms that you might have a higher chance of having infertility. Big disclaimer, some people will have these signs and symptoms and not have infertility. Of course, nothing is 100%. But this is to help guide you for potentially who should seek an evaluation sooner and who might benefit from earlier intervention, egg freezing, or getting clued in, getting fertility testing done at an earlier stage. So number one is going to be painful periods or painful intercourse. And specifically, having pain when you're on your period or having pain in certain positions with intercourse, like deep penetration, or when you're on top, not necessarily insertional pain, but more of a deeper pelvic pain. The reason why these are warning signs is that this can be a symptom of endometriosis. And endometriosis is a chronic inflammatory disorder that has an autoimmune component. Essentially though, it causes a lot of inflammation in the body and can cause some scarring. This inflammation, is associated with a drop in your egg count and having a harder time getting pregnant. Some people with endometriosis have no symptoms, but some people have very painful periods. So the line in the sand, because how do you know if what you're experiencing is normal or abnormal, is that if your periods are so painful that it interferes with your daily living. If you would cancel dinner plans to your favorite restaurant, if you would not go see a movie because you're on your period, if you vomit or pass out, that's not normal, and that is a warning sign that you might have endometriosis and should be evaluated. Number two is going to be irregular or absent periods. Your period is a vital sign. Now, of course, if you're on contraception, if you have an IUD in place, you're on birth control pill or the shot, this doesn't apply because your period's not a vital sign then. But when you're not on any type of hormone contraception, if your periods do not come, at a regular predictable interval, then that is a sign that something can be off. Similarly, if you have abnormal bleeding or spotting in between, if your periods are irregular, skip months or are absent, this could be a variety of things that could reflect hormone dysfunction, thyroid disease, PCOS, hypothalamic dysfunction, and should be evaluated. You would be shocked how many times somebody will come to my office after trying to get pregnant for a year and they've only had three periods. So they've only had a couple opportunities to even potentially get pregnant. So if your periods aren't regular and you wanna be pregnant, you should get an evaluation before you even start. Try to get to that root cause. Number three is going to be for your partner, any issue with low libido or erectile dysfunction because these are signs of a low testosterone. And what's really interesting if we think about male anatomy is that testosterone is made the same time that sperm is produced. So if you're not making as much testosterone as you should, you might not be making as much sperm as you should either. So that would be a warning sign to get a semen analysis done earlier. And remember, male partners should not be taking testosterone if you want to get pregnant now or in the future, because that will act as male birth control and decrease the stimulus to even make sperm altogether. Number four is gonna be history of chlamydia or gonorrhea. So history of those specific sexually transmitted infections, they can advance through the cervix, uterus, into the fallopian tubes, and they're the leading cause of tubal scarring or tubal disease. Now this can cause tubal infertility, it can cause ectopic pregnancy, it can make it sometimes impossible to get pregnant without IVF. 
And often this is another scenario where somebody might have no idea that their fallopian tubes are blocked. They've tried to get pregnant for a year or two, and then they come in to see me. So this is a circumstance where if you're not getting pregnant quickly and you know you had a history of chlamydia back in college, you might want to see your OBGYN or fertility doctor so that we can do a tubal evaluation. And that tubal test can be done either with what's called an HSG, hysterosalpingogram, known as the x-ray dye test, or it can be a water bubble ultrasound. We use a FemView in office. But essentially, you're pushing liquid through the fallopian tubes, trying to confirm that they are open. Number five is actually going to be your weight. And if you're both underweight or overweight, these can both be problematic when you're trying to get pregnant. One of the top things you can do if you know you want to be pregnant in the future and not this moment is get your body to a healthy weight. Just remember, when you're getting pregnant, your body needs to be convinced that it can support another human being, that it has enough metabolic reserves and calories and energy to feed and grow a baby and develop bones and organs. So if you're underweight, if you're really restricting calories, that can prevent your brain from sending out the right hormones. It can impair your ovulation, your luteal phase, send out your lining, and ultimately just make it hard to get pregnant. If you're overweight, that can be associated with some chronic inflammation and other issues that make it harder to get pregnant. And we know this impacts not just egg quality, but also some uterine lining because in studies of women who use donor eggs to get pregnant, so egg quality was good across the board, those who had a higher BMI had a lower ratio of success. Actually, women who had a really low BMI had a lower ratio too. So that normal BMI was associated with the highest success rate with transfer and both being underweight and overweight negatively impacted your success, even with donor egg. So this is a lot about the environment of the body and the brain's interpretation of your overall health status. And then number six is going to be any personal or family history of autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease is increasing in prevalence. It often causes chronic inflammation in the body, and it can take seven to 10 years to get to a diagnosis after the onset of symptoms. And often women are diagnosed in their mid thirties to mid forties. So this means those seven to 10 years are often when you're trying to get pregnant. Having infertility or recurrent pregnancy loss can actually be a symptom of a lot of autoimmune disease. And in my opinion, I think a lot of autoimmune disease presents first with unexplained infertility or pregnancy loss, but they often run in families, even if they're not the same. So if you have a mom, sisters, aunt that have certain autoimmune diseases, that's something to just know about, to bring up to your doctor earlier, to bring up to your PCP, to get checked. And if you're having a hard time, you might want to fast track into an evaluation. So when should you see a fertility doctor? The normal recommendation is that if you're having regular unprotected intercourse and you're not pregnant within one year, that equals infertility. What we do in the field, because we know it gets harder to get pregnant as you get older, is that if you're 35 and older, you should only try for six months and then get an evaluation. And if you're 40, you should try for zero to three months before getting an evaluation. And my preference for 40 and above is that you actually come see me first, get an evaluation. If everything's good, then try for whatever amount of time we decide before we accelerate with intervention. Because if we find out sperm counts are really low and it's not going to happen, we don't have as much time to waste. So time is super important. But those are just set guidelines. Presuming you're having intercourse, everything's fine, and you're having regular periods. If anything is off, that is a clue that you might want to be seen earlier, before you want to get pregnant, or consider an earlier intervention. Basic fertility testing includes checking to see your anatomy, your uterus fallopian tubes, and to get an egg count or checking your ovarian reserve. If you've got a partner, then we can check a semen analysis. Again, some of these things tell us right now information that can change in the future. But of course, if something is off right now, you might make a different decision, and that is powerful. Hope this video helped you understand a little bit about some of those warning signs. Ask any of your questions down below. And as always, you can get more information on the As A Woman podcast or follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks, friends.